We begin with smoking and the sometimes contradictory stories out there about its relationship with COVID-19. In the US, the FDA warned that if you were a smoker and contracted the virus, you might become sicker than non-smokers. Then last week, they even added, in response to a question from Bloomberg News, that people who smoke cigarettes may also be at an increased risk of becoming infected with the virus in the first place. But meanwhile, a new French study suggested that smokers were less likely to get the virus and that nicotine might even protect them from it, which all leaves smokers in a tricky position. Should they be worried? Should they still be trying to give up or not? In search of clarity, I spoke to Linda Bold, who's Professor of Public Health at the University of Edinburgh and Chair in Behavioural Research for Cancer Prevention at Cancer Research UK. I asked her why some studies are finding that among COVID-19 patients in hospital, there are fewer smokers than you might expect. Smoking status is being very poorly recorded. And even in the UK, we have far to go till we get that right with the patients who are being uh, admitted to hospital or indeed individuals who are being tested for COVID. So does that leave you with quite a small number of studies to look at to try to work out what is happening with smoking and COVID? Well, that's correct. So I'm fortunate that my uh, expert colleagues at University College London and also the Royal Veterinary College are doing what we call a live review, a rapid review, which is being updated regularly. And they've found 28 studies from a number of countries, but most of them had very poor levels of recording of, of smoking status. So that was one of the big challenges when they've tried to look at this tricky issue. So what possible reasons could there be for that? So the first and probably most likely one is that smoking status is just simply not being accurately recorded. The staff are busy, the patients may be too unwell, there's definitely no validation of of smoking status, for example, by using a carbon monoxide test, so we just don't know. That's the first explanation. The second explanation, though, might be more intriguing, and that there might actually be something real going on, which means that fewer smokers when they come into contact with the virus are developing COVID or alternatively need to go into hospital. Yes, so one suggestion has been that it's to do with nicotine. Yes, we think it might be. So essentially what happens with SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus rather than the disease, it enters cells through a particular receptor, the ACE2 receptor. And we know there's some evidence that gene expression and receptor levels are higher in the airways of smokers, and that might put them at more risk. But alternatively, other studies show that nicotine, so that's the addictive property in cigarettes, downregulates that receptor. So it's possible that the nicotine, and this is just a hypothesis at the moment, is providing some kind of protective effect against the disease developing when people come into contact with the virus. That does seem sort of extraordinary in one way, doesn't it? Because we think of smoking as something that we know is so damaging to the lungs. If people have got the disease and already and are in hospital, do they then do worse if they were smokers? Yes, we know from many studies that smoking really increases the risk of respiratory viral and bacterial infections and it's also associated with worse outcomes when people are infected. But first point is we're not seeing evidence that smokers are more likely to get it for whatever reason might be under reporting but we do find some evidence that when they are going into hospital they do have worse outcomes. So what we call disease severity and that's things like admission, to intensive care, needing oxygen, or even death. And there's 10 studies in the UCL review, but only two of them were high quality where smoking status was adequately um, recorded and they could conduct a meta-analysis where they combined the data. And that showed that actually the smokers were at greater risk of experiencing severe disease compared with never smokers. So a few pieces of evidence there. So smoking in order to try to protect yourself or continuing smoking in order to try to protect yourself would not be a good idea. No, and the main reason is not a good idea. Well, the first point is we're in the middle of a horrific respiratory disease pandemic and doing anything that's going to affect your chances of recovering from COVID if you develop it, it would be awful for the individual and for their families. But the second thing, of course, is that smoking harms nearly every organ in the body. It also reduces our quality of life and crucially life expectancy. So on average, smokers lose between 10 to 11 years of life. And it's the main preventable cause of cancer, respiratory disease, um, heart disease, diabetes, etc. And these are all underlying health conditions which are big risk factors for uh, hospitalization uh, if you develop COVID. So 
the, the main advice and the clear advice from, in fact, public health agencies around the world is actually this is an even better time than usual to stop smoking, despite some of the intriguing findings we're seeing signs of around the possible relationship with nicotine. And in the US, the FDA has said that not only might smokers have worse outcomes if they get the virus, but now they're saying they might be at a higher risk of catching the virus too. This is a really confusing pitch of people, isn't it? It is. So, I mean, I haven't seen, and I did try to find the data that the FDA were using. I, I say we can be confident that worse outcomes will result uh, for smokers if they become very unwell with COVID. But the, the point about smokers are more at risk for getting it, I don't think we actually know that. There's some things around the behavioural factors, for example, hand-to-mouth movements involved in smoking, and that might increase infection and transmission. You know, in public health, everybody understands and the public understands that smoking is damaging for health. But I think it's very important where we have uncertainties about the mechanisms that we don't overclaim. So stopping smoking is the best thing any smoker can do for their health, but we can't say at the moment that it makes them more susceptible to COVID. Now, the authors of a new French paper, which was one of the ones which found lower rates of infection in smokers, have suggested, rather than, of course, people smoking, that perhaps it's worth doing a study looking at non-smokers and giving them nicotine patches in case it's nicotine that's making the difference. Is that a realistic kind of study to do? Well, I think it's an interesting study. So they definitely found in there, I think they had around 480 patients, 350 who got into hospital from COVID. And they found that those who smoked every day were less likely to develop symptoms or severe infection. So that's what they found. So they, they've they done their research on nicotine. They know how it works with receptors and in the body. And so what they're proposing to do is to give COVID patients nicotine replacement therapy patches. And of course, NRT is a medicine. Now, the first point of why that might be a good idea is because scientists around the world are focusing on what we call repurposing existing medicines. We've all heard about the malaria drugs, for example, to see if they will help people with COVID as a treatment. So it's entirely appropriate, particularly because NRT is very low cost, it's cheap to try this in COVID patients in France. And it will be fascinating to see what they find. So that would be more trying it with patients rather than giving it to people in the hope that they didn't contract COVID in the first place. Yeah, no, nobody's advising at the moment that we give mass nicotine replacement therapy <laughs> to people. But I would say for people who smoke, accessing NRT as part of a quit attempt, we know that's highly effective in terms of helping them to quit smoking, particularly if they use what we call combination therapy. So that might be the gum and a patch. So the message to smokers is, definitely try and stop smoking and in fact using nicotine replacement therapy will increase your chances of quitting and who knows it may have some relationship with covid but we'll only know that through time and is it too soon yet to know whether people who smoke are smoking more during lockdown uh maybe you know bored and, and having less to do or perhaps smoking less because they're worrying about you know trying to stay healthy so we don't actually know about the smoking more, but we have a study funded by Cancer Research UK, which will show us that very soon. But on the smoking less or trying to quit, we do have some evidence on that in the UK. So we've seen reports from the stop smoking services that are still offering support over the telephone um, that the numbers of people trying to quit has increased. And also uh, there's a new service called Quit for COVID. So that's Quit F-O-R COVID if, uh, if people are interested in Googling that, that has been set up specifically to help smokers to quit at this challenging time. And that's a Twitter um, discussion that happens uh, every evening with trained special advisors, Louise Ross uh, and others, and they can provide advice to smokers. So there's definitely new interventions being developed um, to help people who want to quit at this time. Linda Bald on smoking and COVID-19.